this week we're learning about the idea of a sampling distribution. A sampling distribution is a distribution of possible samples, each with its own sample statistic. I think the best way to introduce the idea of a sampling distribution is to show examples. So let's look at a few examples of a sampling distribution. In this first example, we're looking at a population of four people. In this population, there's one 20-year-old, one 30-year-old, one 40-year-old, and one 50-year-old. The mean age of this population is 35. If you added the four ages and divided the total by four, you would get 35. We're imagining that a certain person is interested in what the mean age of this population equals. But for some reason, the person doesn't have enough time to ask all four people for their ages. So what the person does is the person randomly selects a sample of two people from the population, records their two ages, and calculates the mean of the two ages to estimate or to get a rough idea of what the mean age of all four people equals. The person calculates a sample mean to estimate a population mean. In this situation, the person might write the names of all four population members on pieces of paper, put the names into a hat, shake it up, and then take out two pieces of paper without looking. That would give the person a random sample of two people. In this situation, there's different combinations of two people that might be selected. The person might get person one and person two. The person might get person one and person three. The person might get person 2 and person 3, or the person might get person 3 and person 4. Also, in this situation, the number that the sample mean comes out to depends on which two people become the actual sample. If the person gets person 1 and person 2, the sample mean will be 25, because the sample will have a 20-year-old and a 30-year-old. If the person gets person 1 and person 3, the sample mean will be 30, because the sample will have a 20-year-old and a 40-year-old. If the person gets person 3 and person 4, the sample mean will be 45 because the sample will have a 40-year-old and a 50-year-old. Overall, we can see that there's different combinations of two people that could be selected, and each combination of two people has its own sample mean. Since each combination of two people has its own sample mean, we can think of those sample means as having a distribution of their own. Let's take a look at what that distribution would look like. It would look like this distribution right here. In this distribution, we're looking at the six um, combinations of two people that could be selected from this population. Um, these are the, the six possible samples that might be selected by this person. Only one of them will become the actual sample. Also, each of the six possible samples of two people is placed above its sample mean. Person 1 and person 2 have a sample mean of 25 because person 1 is 20 and person 2 is 30 and 20 plus 30 is 50 and 50, 50 divided by 2 is 25. Person 1 and person 3 have a mean of a sample mean of 30 because person 1 is 20 and person 2 is 30. Um, I'm sorry, person 1 is 20 and person 3 is 40. 20 plus 40 is 60, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. Person 3 and person 4 have a sample mean of 45, because person 3 is 40 and person 4 is 50. So overall, one of these six possible samples will become the actual sample in this situation, and the number that the sample mean comes out to depends on which of the possible samples is selected. Um, these and these six possible samples make up the sampling distribution in this situation. You can think of a sampling distribution as being a distribution of possibilities for a random sample. When a random sample is selected from a population and a sample statistic is calculated, the sampling distribution is just the distribution of possibilities for what the outcome might turn out to be. In a sampling distribution, the possible samples aren't all equally accurate. Some of them are more accurate, and others are more extreme. Person 1 and Person 2 is um, a fairly extreme sample, because um, if the person gets Person 1 to Person 2, the sample mean will be the lowest number it could possibly be. Person 3 and Person 4 is also a pretty extreme sample, because if the person gets Person 3 and Person 4, the sample mean will be the highest number it could possibly be. Um, these two samples in the middle are the, are the most accurate because 
if the person gets um, person two and person three, or person one and person four, the sample mean will be 35, and the sample mean will be exactly the same number as the population mean, which is also 35. It's important to understand the idea of a sampling distribution because when you understand the idea of a sampling distribution, you understand why the outcome of a random sample depends on which people end up in the sample. Um, and the, the people that end up in the sample depends on chance. Also, when you understand the idea of a sampling distribution, you understand why um, the outcome of a random sample isn't guaranteed to be accurate. Um, because um, an accurate sample might be selected, but an extreme sample might also be selected. If um, if a sample, if an accurate sample is selected, the outcome will be accurate. But if an extreme sample is selected, the outcome will be extreme. When you take a random sample, you pretty much have to just hope for an accurate sample. Let's look at another uh, example of a sampling distribution. In this situation, a person is taking a random sample of three people from this population, recording their three ages, and calculating the mean age of, th of the three people to estimate the mean age of the population. In this situation, this is the sampling distribution. There's four possible um, samples that might be selected, and each possible sample have it, has its own sample mean. If the person gets person one, two, and three, the sample mean will be 30. Um, if the person gets person two, person three, and person four, the sample mean will be 40. Or if the person gets person one, two, and four, the sample mean will be 33.33. So once again, the number that the sample mean comes out to depends on which sample is selected. And each possible sample provides different information about the population. Here's one more example of a sampling distribution. In this situation, a person is randomly selecting a, a sample of two people from the population of five and calculating the, the mean age of the sample. The person is going to get one of these ten possible samples. One of these ten possible samples will become the actual sample, and the number that the sample mean comes out to depends on which sample is selected. When a, when a person takes a random sample, it's kind of like the person is spinning the wheel and um, the person just has to wait to see, waits to see what he or she gets. Now that we understand the idea of a sampling distribution, um, let's talk about the different features of a sampling distribution. A sampling distribution has um, three major features. Since it's really just a collection of numbers, um, which, ha or, which happen to be sample means, a sampling distribution has um, a mean of its own, uh, a standard deviation of its own, and a shape of its own. The mean of the sampling distribution would just be the mean of all 10 of these sample means. If you added all 10 of these numbers and divided the total by 10, you would get the mean of the sampling distribution. In other words, if you added 15 plus 20 plus 25 plus 25, plus 30, plus 30, plus 35, plus 35, plus 40, plus 45, and divided the total by 10, you would get the mean of a sampling distribution. It turns out that when a random sample is selected and a sample mean is calculated, like in this situation, the mean of a sampling distribution equals the mean of the population. They're always the same. So if you calculated the mean of the five ages in the population, by adding them and dividing by 5, and you calculated the mean of the sampling distribution by adding the 10 numbers and dividing by 10, you would get the same answer. They would both be 30. Um, the, the standard deviation um, of a sampling distribution is called the standard error. So the, the standard deviation of, the, of these 10 numbers in the sampling distribution um, is called the standard error of the sampling distribution. Um, the standard error um, has to do with the amount of spread or the amount of dispersion in the sampling distribution. Um, when, if the possible samples are, are are clustered close together like this, then the standard error will be low. 
But if the possible samples are, are spread out over a wide range, uh, further out to the left and further to the right, the standard error will be larger. Um, when the standard error is large and the possible samples are more spread out, um, the researcher is less likely to get an accurate outcome because the person is more likely to get an extreme outcome way out here or way out here. Um, later we'll talk about how the standard error is affected by two factors. It's affected by the sample size and also the amount of dispersion or spread in the population. And also I mentioned that a sampling distribution has a shape. Right here we can see that the shape is, it's not quite normal because it's a little bit too flat. Um, the shape of a sampling distribution is actually important um, because when a researcher takes a random sample from the population um, and calculates the sample mean, the researcher has to know what shape the sampling distribution has. Um, later we'll talk about how um, a researcher can actually predict what shape the sampling distribution has without actually being able to look at all of the different possible samples that might be selected. Finally, I wanted to mention that in each of these examples, I was um, giving you a situation in which a person is taking a random sample from a small population. And the examples aren't very real realistic, but the reason why I did that is so that I could actually make a diagram of the sampling distribution to give you an idea of what a sampling distribution actually is. Um, in a, in a real-life study, a person would take a random sample from a big population. For example, a person might take a random sample of, let's say, 100 people from the Pleasant Hill population and calculate the mean age of those 100 people to estimate the mean age of the entire city. I couldn't uh, use that example in a diagram because um, the population would be too big for me to show it here, and also there would be too many possible samples for me to diagram all of them out right here. So these examples were just exercises to help you get an understanding of what a sampling distribution is and why it's important. It's important for you to understand that um, the outcome of a random sample depends on which um, which group of people becomes the sample. And a sample isn't guaranteed to be accurate because um, if an extreme sample is selected, the sample will be extreme. And if an accurate sample is selected, the sample will be accurate. Um, overall, a person, when a person takes a random sample, the person is hoping for a sample, to get a sample from the middle area of the sampling distribution. Because those samples are more accurate or representative. And a person is hoping to not get an extreme sample way out at the left end or way out at the right end of the sampling distribution. Because if that happens, the person will either highly underestimate the population or highly overestimate the population.